But I, as, as I point, want to point out before I, we end with poor David French, that there are, he did write plays that are highly poetic, too, that you could do in a much less literal uh, presentation, like Saltwater Moon, for example, or a play that was completely outside of the range of interests that he was normally had, like Jitters, you know what I mean? But j even Jitters required a certain... Um, reality in the decor, you know, in the dressing room scenes in Jitters. You've got to have the ho the whole thing has got to be there, you know what I mean? But are you saying that there is a, a, a poetic freedom that's a bit more alive in Francophone theater and do you use No, I'm not saying that. I okay. would never say that. It's not, it's, I think the, the Anglophone theater and the repertoire David French, uh, whatever, is just as alive as, as anything else is, you know? The Frank Film Theater is not better, it's not more alive, less alive, it's just different. No, no, I'm not saying better or worse when mm -hmm. I say there's a more freedom, because I find English culture more corporate, more commercial. I find well, it is. imaginative yeah. boundaries are more uh, like the vice. The commercial needs to produce that, you know, next crowd pleaser actually kind of shrinks the freedom of where you will go with your imagination. And I don't see that as much in Very other often cultures. in Anglo uh, theaters, uh, in Anglo designing and directing, collaborating, uh, no matter how high-blown high the project, or the concept is, it ultimately comes down to like, where's the door? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes in the Francophone theater, they don't even want the door. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care where the... I care where it is, but okay. And you know, I mean, there's less emphasis. It's like that designing for the for. I design a lot for dancers too. I have done and, and for ballet choreographers, and they don't care where the door is. You know what I mean? Like just in that general direction or something. But maybe the best example I can give you of this difference is there's this play called. Um, I saw it in Toronto and I saw it in Montreal called Three in the Back, Two in the Head. You know that play? Jason Sherman. That's right. Yeah, about the death, uh, the killing of a man who was trading in uh, nuclear... Now that pieces. play was, that's another play that was translated and produced here. Right. The most amazing setting. I saw it in Toronto at the Tarragon. It was a quite a stylish, uh, the kind of metallic office uh, setting, you know what I mean? It was wonderful, to, I forget who designed it, but it was a great set, lit beautifully, and it was great. Here, in Montreal, it was, it was a grand piano on the stage with one of the legs collapsed. You know the back one? Mm -hmm. There's only three legs on a grand piano, and the back one was collapsed, so the piano was inclined. And there was this fine line of sand falling from up there, th from a sandbag with a tiny little hole punched in that just landed on the top of the piano. And that was about it. And I'm thinking, like, what part of this am I not getting? <laughs> it, was, it was an example of perhaps high concept gone wrong. Maybe. Maybe. So I'm, all I'm saying is that high concept isn't always the answer, right. you know, because it can go 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 on you, you know, or go way over there. Yeah. And I, that was just an example, but it was it's also an example of the different takes on the same material from Anglo to Franco. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't. You probably wouldn't see a set like that for that play in Toronto. Is all I'm saying.